Well, welcome back physical science students to week three of our online learning. Um, like I stated before, it's very important that you guys stay up on your assignments um, and work through the things I'm asking you to work through, emailing me questions when you have them, coming into office hours when you have questions as well. Um, I'm always free for that. Uh, messaging me on Teams, anything that you guys have a question about, make sure that you ask. Because uh, chemistry, obviously, I mean, it's not going to be something easy that just you guys pick up right away most of the time. So without a doubt, if you have questions, ask me. All right, so we're moving on from isotopes. Isotopes should have been the last thing that you guys did. Um, we are going to be talking about ions and the periodic table. And I apologize in advance. I have been sick. Um, so if my voice sounds weird, that's because that's why. Um, and if I cough during this video, it is what it is. All right, but let's get into it. Our DLO, I'm going to start posting to make sure that you guys are on track with what we're supposed to be knowing. Um, first thing, I can identify the difference between an isotope and an ion. We're going to talk about that right away. And then we're also going to talk about the periodic table and how it's arranged. So you're going to be able to need to find information on the periodic table and understand how and why it's arranged the way that it is. <clears throat> All right, so let's jump right into it. So we have isotopes versus ions. Okay, so we talked about isotopes being forms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. So you'll look over here with my potassium. These two are isotopes, okay, because you'll notice that the only difference is my number of neutrons right here. Okay, so my number of neutrons is different. So K is potassium, so we have 19 protons that it's potassium's atomic number, which you can find right here. Okay, atomic number is on the bottom. Remember that this number up here is our mass number. I can spell. My pen is not working very well, but that's okay. Okay, but anyways, that is our mass number. A um, couple things to remember. Your mass number is the protons okay plus your neutrons okay so it doesn't have, neutrons don't have a charge so i usually put a zero but either way protons plus neutrons so if you'll notice my atomic number or my mass number here is 19 plus 20 which is 39 and then here it is 40 because that's 19 plus 21 okay so those are isotopes of each other okay same number of protons different number of neutrons ions are a little bit different okay they are the same element but they have a different number of electrons so i told you earlier that the number of protons determines what kind of atom you have so if you have six protons you're always going to have a carbon atom if you have eight you're always going to have oxygen in this case if you have 19 you're always going to have potassium okay the things that can vary are the uh, the neutrons and the electrons so in this case I have an ion so the electrons are the things that are different okay you'll notice that my potassium must have lost an electron because normally they stand they start out neutral where the protons and new protons and electrons are the same okay so if they're 19 and 19 this one now has 18 so it lost one okay and so what happens is now if I lose a negative, notice I have more positives than I do negatives. So if you think back to our charge unit, okay, when I have more positives than negative charges, I'm slightly positive. And so usually what we would say is that we would be K and we either, either put just a plus sign or we put a one plus to indicate that we have one more proton than electron. Okay, if we had two more protons than electrons, let's say these electrons went down to 17 for some reason, we would write K2 plus. Okay, and so obviously these things were going to stay the same. Our mass number would still be 39 and our atomic number would still be 19 because that's, again, number of protons and then the number of protons plus the neutrons. Okay, other things that can happen, you can also get minuses. So if we have a K1 minus, that means I have one more electron. K1 
Okay, one more electron. Sorry about that. I need to hold my screen. One more electron than a proton. Okay, so that would mean I have, in that case, for this one, I would have 20 electrons, and then that would make my ion slightly negative. Okay, again, if you're working through the stuff today and this doesn't make sense, you don't know where I'm getting my numbers from, please, please ask, and I can explain it to you one-on-one. -on -one. We can meet, we can video chat, whatever you guys want to do um, to get it across. <coughs> Okay, so ions come in two forms. Okay, so you'll notice that I had on the last slide both positive versions and I said there could be negative versions. So anions are the name for negative ions. This is when you have gained electrons. Okay, so if I gain electrons, that means I now have more electrons than I do protons, making me negative. Okay, so keywords to make sure that you write down. Anions are negative and they have gained electrons okay anions gain okay and they become more negative cations are the exact opposite so let me do a different color so i don't mess you up cations are positive because they lost electrons remember electrons are negative so if i lose negatives i become positive okay so and you can see your examples here the cation has three negatives Okay, so three negatives, and it has in here five positives with a net charge that is two positive. Okay, and then we have our anion here that has one, two, three, four, five negatives and three positives, and so that leaves a net charge of two minus. Okay, don't overcomplicate this thing. Okay, cat. <coughs> excuse me, cations are always going to have a positive result, anions are always going to have a negative result. Okay, atoms, <coughs> atoms will lose or gain electrons in order to have a full outer shell, which we talk about later, um, especially when we talk about valence electrons and filling outer shells and um, Bohr models and Lewis dot structures. I'm going to cover that um, in our next video, so for our next assignments, we'll talk about those. Um, so don't worry too much about them right now. Um, but just so you know, anions and cations are formed because electrons are trying to move either away from this atom or towards this atom. All right, guys, so we're going to get in some practice here real quick. Um, these things will be on your tests and your quizzes. Um, so make sure that you are able to fill out these tables with isotopes and ions and understanding how many protons and neutrons and electrons there are in these atoms. So to start, let's go through and if you look at this row or this column here, okay, let's go through and let's first identify if they are an ion or an isotope. And I'm just going to write it over here to the right. Um, so this iodine, notice that the symbol for it is I negative one. Okay, well those numbers in the top right only show up if it's an ion. Okay, so this is going to be an ion. Okay, that's how we write those. Okay, so you're going to have some kind of one minus or plus three or plus two or some kind of number in the top right. Um, and then all of these ones, if they're written like this with a dash something okay or they look their symbols look like this one or this one those are both isotopes okay so isotopes isotopes which means for me that the rest of these are ions okay so that's going to be an ion that's going to be an ion ion um and this one's going to be an ion um real quick actually let's just start with iodine Okay, so when we go to iodine, okay, so we have I negative one, so atomic number, you may need to use your uh, periodic table for this. So again, ptable.com is the best one out there on the internet to use. So whenever I reference your, okay, your periodic table, normally I hand some out and you fill them out and all that stuff. But obviously with online, we can't do that. So 
whenever I reference that in a um, assignment or anything, just use ptable.com. That is perfectly fine. It'll work. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the good thing about the atomic number is that it always comes from the number of protons there are. Okay. So if you imagine, I have the number of protons right here, right here, right here. Okay. And so I can just copy those over and they're all going to be the same. Okay. So 53 and 53, one, one, eight, that's an eight, seven, seven, who I might have to look that one up, uh, 26 and 26. Hey, if I remember correctly, aluminum is the 13th element. So let me look that up on my phone real quick. Ptable.com. And aluminum is in fact the 13th element. So I now know that this is 13 and this is 13. Perfect. Okay, let's do uh, mass numbers next. Actually, I can't do mass numbers next because mass numbers, again, are the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to find the neutrons. Okay, so if my mass number is 127, okay, I know that whatever this number is for neutrons plus 53 is going to be 127. So in my calculator, I can just do 127 minus 53. Okay, and what is that off the top of my head? Let's see. <laughs> calculator is loading up. Okay, 127 minus 53 is in fact 74. So I know that this iodine molecule, or I mean this iodine atom has 74 uh, neutrons. And you'll notice that everything in my top line should be good now. Notice I have one more electron, okay, than I do proton, which is why I have a one minus on my symbol. Okay, with this uh, isotope, in the second row okay again I need to do the mass number minus the protons to figure out how many neutrons I have so 100 minus 53 is in fact 47 in this case okay, so 47 neutrons okay now if this is just an isotope okay if it's just an isotope the protons are always going to be equal to the electrons okay because remember Isotopes only have to do with different numbers of neutrons. The electrons, in fact, stay the same. Okay, so there we go with that one. All right, uh, hydrogen is next. We're doing a hydrogen ion. Okay, notice that I have a proton, but no electrons. Okay, so if you think about what my net charge is, protons are positive, electrons are negative, which means that I have a one plus charge. So what I do is I draw in my symbol, symbol for hydrogen is H, and then I put a either a plus one or a one plus, it doesn't really matter, okay, and it just goes like that. Okay, uh, mass number is one, okay, so that means I have one particle in my nucleus, okay, and if the proton is already there, that means I have no neutrons. Okay, remember that the proton column plus the neutron column should always equal the mass number column. Okay, 74 plus 53 is 127. 47 plus 53 is always 100. Uh, zero plus one is one. Using that same logic for oxygen ion, um, something plus eight equals 16. So I know that eight plus eight is 16. So I put an eight in there. Um, <laughs> <coughs> let's finish out that row I have a minus two ion which means I have two more negatives than I do positives so that means I have two more electrons than I do protons which would tell me that I actually have 10 electrons okay two more than my protons all right we'll finish out nitrogen and isotope here Okay, the other thing that you can see is it says nitrogen 15. 
This tells you the mass number right away. Okay, just like iodine 100 was a mass number of 100. Okay, so mass number is 15 there. Uh, remember that neutrons plus protons is mass number, so this one has to be 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. And then again, because it's an isotope, the protons matches the electrons 7 and 7. <clears throat> okay, aluminum. We have an aluminum ion here that has a 3 plus charge. Um, let's do neutrons first. Remember that neutrons, protons equals mass number. Um, so what adds to 13 to get 27? That would be 14. Okay, and if you notice, I have a 3 plus charge because we have 13 protons, 13 positives, and 10 negatives, meaning I have a 3 plus charge. All right, so then the last one, here we have Fe, which is actually iron, okay, and it's got a 2 plus charge. Um, let's do neutrons first. So we have uh, neutrons plus pro protons equals the mass number, something plus 26 equals 56, and that should be 30. Okay, 30 plus 26 is 56, and then you'll notice I have a 2 plus charge because I have 24 electrons and only and only 24 electrons and 26 protons, so two more than 24, which is plus two. Okay, I know this seems like a lot, but as long as you keep the patterns the same, okay, it should be just a whole lot of adding and subtracting numbers. Okay, so again, if this didn't make sense. Make sure that you reach out to me through email or through messages, um, and I can explain it further. All right, so let's get into the periodic table. We are done. I mean, that's all you need to know about ions, positives and negatives. Okay, we'll talk about the periodic table. Okay, elements are obviously arranged in group by their atomic number, starting with hydrogen in the top left, helium in the top right. Basically, we go one see if I can write this one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten eleven and so on actually I think I'm missing one three four five six seven I'm missing like a whole column here this one actually ends with 10 and this is 11 12 this one should be 13 I believe 14 15 16 17, 18. yeah, I'm missing a whole column in this one. That's kind of weird, um, but either way, <laughs> either way, that's how they go. Atoms of the same element always have the same number of protons. We talked about that as well. Eight, eight protons is always going to be an oxygen atom. Six protons is always going to be a carbon atom, no matter what, 100% of the time. Okay, the periodic table is divided into columns and rows. Okay, the columns, the vertical columns are called groups. Okay, and the periods are um, the rows. Okay, they go horizontal. Okay, so for example, helium is in the first group and the first period. Um, it is the only thing in that place. Um, the group, <laughs> the groups, tell you the number of outer number of outer electrons which comes in very important when we start talking about bonding, which is actually our next unit. Um, these outer electrons are also called valence electrons. Um, but for example, like group one here, they're all gonna have one valence electron. Group two here is gonna have two. Um, we're gonna go three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. The In here, we have these things called transition metals that we'll talk about but they're kind of weird. They have different things uh, depending on their uh, makeup of an atom. Okay, but for the most part, you can follow this as the number of outer electrons. Um, the periods tell me how many shells I have, and that's shells of electrons. So, for example, a hydrogen atom has one proton, and it has one shell of electrons, and it has one electron in that outer shell. Okay. <laughs> okay. And again, we'll talk more about shells and all that stuff actually on our next video. 
when I start talking about Bohr models and Lewis dot structures and stuff like that. Um, so that it stuff is more to come. All right, so further periodic table arrangements, they are sometimes arranged, well, not sometimes arranged, they're always arranged according to uh, their characteristics. So for example, we have alkali earth metals here, alkali earth metals here. Um, we have non-metals here, halogens. These I call the noble gases. Some people call them inert elements. We got the transition metals that go through the middle and we have the rare earth metals. Um, these ones contain things like uranium, I believe is like right there um, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, we have these ones that we actually call other metals or metalloids, um, some people call them. Um, they all have different characteristics, very special characteristics. Um, <laughs> and we'll talk about those further in depth. Again, when we talk about bonding and stuff like that, an example of the alkali metals are all will explode if they're exposed to water. They're very good conductors and they are soft metals. Um, that's just one of the examples of all of these um, and how they interact with our world. All right, and that is pretty much all I have for you. I do want you to check out this crash course video on the periodic table. It goes into more depth about how the periodic table came to its arrangement. Um, I want you to focus on when you're taking notes for this video on these three questions. How did the periodic table get the arrangement it has today? What does Dmitri Mendeleev, uh, what was Dmitri Mendeleev able to predict even though he only knew about 60 elements because we have like 120 now, somewhere close to that. Uh, what would be a better representation of periodic table than what we currently have on our wall and on our books? Um, there's the link down there. But again, if, if after this video, if you just go to the one right below, I'm going to post it in our team. Um, that being said, then move on to the assignment um, there is a quiz over the history of the atom and isotopes that you need to complete um, that's the first assessment in our test category so make sure that you do as well as you possibly can and again make sure you're reaching out to me if you have questions um, earth science students have been really good about that i haven't heard from a lot of you physical science students uh, so make sure that you're asking <coughs> and other than that Thanks for watching, and I will be back for another video in a couple days. Thanks.